First, we're going to talk about two cases from Mali, two little incidents, two little stories. The first one is about motherhood. It grew out of an experience I had with my wife, Kay, when we went to Mali in the mid-1990s. It was her first experience in Africa. And we took 36 hours to get to Africa. And uh, flying on Air Afrique, a rattling old French plane felt like it was going to fall apart any minute. People screamed when the storms hit us because the plane shook so crazily. We get there at midnight in this little bombicle airport. Everything's crazy. And we have our friends greet us there and take our luggage out and load it in their trucks. Kay climbs on top of this big dump truck with all our backpacks and stuff. And we drive for three hours until about three in the morning out through this wild, dark place where there were no lights, the road was barely paved, had a lot of potholes, and every once in a while, guys would come out of the bush with guns and stop us to check and see if we're criminals, to see if we're robbers, to see if we're part of a revolution, because there's so much crime and, and so much danger on this one single road that goes from Bamako to Ivory Coast. It's the only highway between those two countries. And everything is pitch black. We arrive in this village. We get out of the truck to load up, put our stuff in our compound and try to get four hours of sleep. We're hearing donkeys bray. We're hearing cows moo. We're hearing roosters crow. There's no lights, just some candles. No electric power. And my wife comes up and hugs me and says, Warner, I'm home. Finally, I'm home. She's loving Africa. Says, I wanted to do this forever. I'm so glad I'm here. The next day, we went to see a couple of schools that our organization, Willesabugu, Utah Alliance, had built. We had raised funds in Salt Lake City. We'd sent them to our NGO staff in Wellesabugu, which is an area of about 25 villages out in the boondocks. Most of them you have to hike to, to or, or get in a jeep to get over the dirt roads and down through riverbeds, dry riverbeds, by the way, because this is a desert area, 18 years of drought. The main product people eat there is bird seed, what we call bird food here in the U.S., so we, the six of us climb in the back of a pickup truck and bounce over these roads for a couple of hours and get to this village. And as we arrive, villagers are clapping and dancing and singing and beating drums. And there's a big celebration to thank us. Their school is ready to be dedicated. We embrace them. We learn from them. Our translators help us understand uh, the Bambara language that they're speaking. And the sights, the smells, the dust, the beautiful babies tied to the backs of their mothers as they danced. It was a marvelous experience. Uh, eventually, we have the big dedicatory service. And we're standing about 500 people in a square under a big baobab tree with mud huts all around us. And a few wells we've helped dig. And then a little schoolhouse made out of adobe brick and a cement pad. <clears throat> and we congratulate those people. We talk about how important education is, how they need to think about the long-term future of their villages and move from, eventually from mud bricks and no education and drought to having ample water, to having healthy gardens, to having schools and education for their children and through microfinance that we're going to start working with them on next, they will be able to have a much better future. After the ceremony is wrapping up, one of the old village elders looks at my wife and says, Madame Werner, Madame Warner, you are from the United States, is that true? She says, yes, through the translator. He says, do you have a family there? 
We say, yes, we do. They say, how many children? Kay and I look at each other and we say, well, we have 10 children plus five grandchildren. When we said the word 10, people just erupted in cheers and clapping and dancing and the drummers drumming and the people dancing. And we look at each other like, did we just hand out a million dollars? Or what happened? What, what are they saying? And they said, we've never known anybody with 10 children in all this area of Africa. And then the, one of the wives of the chief said, and how many of your 10 children are alive? And at that point, we, you know, it gets deathly silent. We look at each other and we say to Modibo, what does she mean? He says, she's asking you, how many of your children are living? And we look at each other again and we say, all 10. And they just went crazy with cheering and chanting and shouting. And the old chief said, now, Madame Werner, we must give you an African name because of your life and your legacy. And she said, oh, I'd love that. I've been wanting an African name for many years. So, so she says, what should it be? And the chief confers with the other elders and they say, your name is Dembanuma. And the crowd goes crazy and the dancing starts and the drums start beating and somebody begins playing a flute. And we say, oh, that's beautiful. How do you say that? <laughs> We're asking, now how do we say that word? Dembanuma, Dembanuma. Okay, we learn how to say it. And then Kay asks, and what does that word mean? And they said, oh, it means good mother. And everybody shouted again. On our staff, they all started clapping because they understood English <laughs> and, and the translation. And, and uh, Kay said, oh, no, 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 no. That's not a good name for me. I am not a good mother. I'm a bad mother. I need to work hard to be a better mother and raise my children more effectively. And they say, oh, no, 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 no. You don't understand. Your name is Dembanama. You are a very good mother. Why? because you have all 10 children living. And they explained that again and everybody went crazy. And at that point, point, we both looked at each other and had tears in our eyes thinking what a gap there was between their world where almost every family has had one or two or three children die. Almost every family in those villages had someone die from HIV AIDS disease, from malaria, from civil war and conflict. And it never thought of, it never occurred to us that she would be defined, my wife Kay, defined as a good mother simply because all of our 10 children are still living.